So guys, let's try and demystify how I created that Java bike ad. And this was uh, not something that I wanted to do initially, but it came out as a request, which I ended up creating. And then I moved it over to various apps that I'm going to explain at the end of the video or before the video ends. And how this works is first and foremost, we got the bike, which was modeled. And then we brought it directly into Maya. And from Maya, we decided to transform how we would like the parts of the bike to, you know, come together and make the complete bike. So individual parts were actually hand animated from uh, where they were in position to where they would be before the animation starts. And so the, the best way to do something like this is don't try to animate from the beginning to the end. It's always better you animate within a reverse order. The reverse order, which I mean, simply means that let the uh, model or let the piece be in the place where you want them to be at the end of the animation. Then you can go ahead and animate them backwards. It's quite better and it's going to be way easier for you to control the animation that way. Contrary to, you know, you trying to animate it uh from the end back to the beginning or something like that so it's always better for your animation to start for for things like this especially if they're a complete piece it's always better for them to start from where they were then you animate backwards or, or how you want them to come in then the next thing which we decided to do was you know ship this over from uh, Maya and move it over to Keyshot, which we decided to make use for the rendering. Obviously, there are other apps which we could use. We would have also just maybe jumped over to Mamoset and simply rendered this out. But you know, we were still at that point, we were still testing out the Keyshot 8, so we just wanted to see how it held. And another thing to note is if you're importing your Maya files directly from Maya into uh, Keyshot, Keyshot is able to read the keyframes that you actually created in Maya. So if you animate objects in Maya, you can just simply bring them in and Keyshot will natively read them. But if they have to do with bones or maybe skeletons or FBX files, I don't really think Keyshot does well with that because Keyshot doesn't know how to read animation files from Maya, especially if they have joints attached to them or if they are bound to a certain skin so when we brought this to keyshot the next thing which we decided to think about was the camera placement just to help tell that uh you know snappy snappy kind of story so we went around you know playing with the entire cameras that exist in keyshot and for some reason we decided to create different uh, camera profiles for each of the shots that we were working with for each of these particular shots we started with uh, either using a 50 or a 75 or a 35 depending on what we wanted to sell at a given point and because this was supposed to be in less than i think less than 20 or 10 seconds that so it was quite easy for us to you know think about what and what we wanted to get so what does what, what does this teach us at the end of the day i mean if you want to start creating something like this definitely you need a storyboard at hand it is going to help you a lot 95 percent of what we did was already preconceived so that's why it was quite easy for us to understand or know how we we're going to go about it so if you're creating something like this my best advice is get a storyboard get it all planned out then you can go ahead lay out how you want your stuff to look like and you know maybe animate them and go ahead and start texturing them after we were done with that the next thing which we started thinking about uh, directly in keyshot was how to save us some time when it had to do with the grading so we also chose to you know start uh, punching in some colors adding some vignettes here and there and after all of that was done we rendered out a lot of them as uh, individual frame sequences which i would advise you to always do whenever you're rendering sequences out i i think that would be the best way for you to go contrary to rendering them as uh a full video file which might either have broken frames or something so it's easier for you to track your frames it's also easier for you to correct things in your frames when you have them as um uh individual frames that are rendered out so we all rendered them out as both uh, uh, jpeg and also uh psd 
I mean, uh, both JPEG and also PNG. And for some of them that we were quite sure that we would not need any of the changes later in time, we just went ahead and rendered them as MP4. Then once we were done, the next thing which we had to do was to put these things together. And what better app was that for us to make use of than DaVinci Resolve. So see you guys in DaVinci Resolve. So we're here in DaVinci Resolve. This is exactly the same project file that we made use of. So what we decided to do was we went ahead and we got a free reality music, which you can also find. And we actually got a percussion stomp clap. And that was the original idea. And I think this actually fits perfectly because of how we wanted to go ahead with the entire stuff in the beginning so the idea here was to uh, follow the beat so we decided to edit based off the beat of the individual uh, sound that was coming out and the cool thing with davinci resolve is you have total control of both the color grading and both the sound so because we had fair light so it was also easy for us to you know play with it and also get along with it and just in case you're not using davinci i think you should switch over from whatever app you're using right now and try out davinci and see how that works for you because uh 95 of the things which you're going to go to other apps to create you can all you can do all of them there in davinci so for example if you're a very core adobe fan and you're making use of premiere you're using after effects you're also using the media encoder and at the same time you're using audition all of those things packed in together plus even if you're going to be using speed grade for example if you have if you still have subscription for something like that all of those things packed together exist in one single app here in davinci 15. so you, you see we have this media pool that's where we can pack up our files and just bring them right here and then we have this part where we get to edit and the editing is simply uh it's very very um similar to how you edit in Premiere for example so it's very similar to how you edit in Premiere It's also very similar to how you edit in Final Cut so it's quite quite similar for you to edit with this stuff so what we had to do was uh, we decided to put these things up together so if I go ahead and play this back so that you can see so for uh, for the individual stumps, like we talked about earlier, for the individual stumps, we had to choose images and then, you know, we had to edit based off the images. And for the parts that were silent, we decided to add a bit of a uh, fade out and a bit of black. So the, the point where your eye blinks, you don't really hear that sound. So we decided to edit based off the sound. And then the next thing which we decided to do was, uh, you know, just simply add basic text, which you can find here. So we added basic text, okay, we added basic text and finally uh, uh, frames like this, which is going to be like the final frame that is going to just, you know, stand for maybe two or three seconds before the entire thing went uh, goes off. We decided to just, you know, simply come through and add up some grading here and the grading is not so much. The grading is quite, quite very, it's literally simple. So we just decided to use a bit of level and then a bit of curve, you know, uh, put things together so i would like to know what you guys think about the entire thing and after you put all these things together and play then you get something that's cool and at the end of the day we decided to leave it this way we actually we purposely chose not to add or increase uh, so much lots to this entire stuff but it doesn't mean that you cannot so if you're working with something like this definitely you can choose to add as much lots as you want to do and you can also choose to grade it uh, the way you choose or how appealing it is for you at the point when you're doing your editing yeah and that's how we ended up creating the java and i would like to know what you guys think about this uh, would you want me to create more tutorials that have to do with resolve or more tutorials that have to do with maya or keyshot so if you have questions about this i would like to put them in the comment section below and if you like this video simply give it a like and also don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and also turn on the notification and just in case you're looking for a channel where you can enjoy so many tutorials rants updates reviews and things like that just simply turn on notification because I'll be uploading more of this stuff. And tell me what you guys think about this. Ask a lot of stuff if you have questions about softwares and other stuff. And I'll do my best to answer you guys. And until I see you guys next time, peace.